Hello my 3D printing friends, my name is Igor and in this video I'd like to talk how to design and 3D print a puzzle from your own image. This will be a long video but here you can see the content so you can skip to the part you would like to see the most because uh, I would like to talk from the beginning how to prepare the image until the 3D printing. This is my first time I'm using this technique. I would like to share my experience with you of course but I need some help too because I'm still looking for a software which could handle much easier that SVG file because my primary software Fusion 360 Design Spark Mechanical couldn't, couldn't uh, handle it. They crashed so it was too big for them. Ridiculous but the only software I could uh, work uh, is the Tinkercad which is browser based software Probably the reason is that uh, during the import it reduced the number of the triangles to the size which it can handle. Uh, so that's the reason why I am looking for other softwares. Because I would like to prepare some bigger images for more corals or similar. And now let's get started. My first step was to prepare the image I would like to use. So this is the image of my third author. Uh, I am using the Faston image viewer for this. It's a completely free program, it has some basic editing tools which we will need for this work. Okay, so first step is to uh, crop the image, edit crop board. If I use the Alt button then I would like to select a square. Crop. Maybe you would like to clear some dirt if you have on images, so I will clean it this uh, later. Next step is colors and make it grayscale. And before I reduce it to, to two or four colors, uh, I would like to play a little bit with contrast. Uh, colors adjust levels. So I would like to set up the contrast, I would like to clear the background maybe. Uh, I can move this scale. Uh, so basically Photoshop would be much better tool for this, but I am showing you the free tool the, which I am using the Fasten Image Viewer. After I play a little bit with the grayscale levels, I am reducing now to four colors. You can use, if you want to print in one color, then you can reduce it to two colors. One is the background, the other is the color of the image. But I would like to use four colors. One is the background and uh, three are different grayscale colors. And this is how it looks like now the picture. So I have uh, this light gray, darker gray, and uh, black. Now basically the, this middle gray will be printed in black and I will see maybe the middle of the eyes will be again in a gray or something like that. I will see that later. We are not finished yet because I have to separate now each color to the separate layer which I will include in the next program. And that I will do with the colors adjust levels. So, uh, so here I can see the limits, the borders of each color. So first I would like to save this color separately and then I will save that later. Next one is this color. OK and save as a, on a different name. And the third is probably the only the, yes, the eyes. So uh, this is also the third image I want to save. So I will have three uh, one bit colors, black and white colors. So th this is the first uh, layer of the gray color. This is the second and this is the third, which will be printed last layer on layer. So these three colors will be printed one on each other. So next program I will use is the Inkscape. It's a completely free program and here I have to import it one by one those images I prepared in a previous program. Profile, embed, OK. Well, OK. Mm, it's too small. So I, I will raise the size. I'm holding out the control button so I will scale it proportionally. But it will be good to remember the size. Yeah. Hundred by hundred. And that they will be equal. Okay, this is now the pixel image. So if I scale it you can see there are pixels, bitmap image. But then 
I will click on it path and trace bitmap. If you prepare the image which contains only black and white pixels, then basically you don't have to change these uh, numbers. Smooth, okay, okay. I can close this window now. And here now we have over our image the vectorized place. I will move it and uh, I would like to show it to you if I zoom it in. So here you can see on the left side is pixelized and on the right side that's a vector image. I don't need this pixel image anymore. And uh, I noticed that if I import this into Fusion 360 or any other program I am using, it's too heavy, too many points uh, in this curve and if it's very, very hard to, to work with this, even uh, on stronger i7 processor uh, computer. So what I do is I select the path and then I simplify it. Just to show you the size, so this is before simply, uh, and this is the after simplified command. So it's not big, visually it's not big difference, but uh, it will be very big difference in the size. Uh, it's a little, little bit tricky because when you select it, you cannot uh, adjust the size of this simplifying. Uh, what I find, uh, so it's in edit, preferences, behavior, and here you can change this size. I already changed. I'm not sure what is the value of the default. So 0 0.0004 is the value I'm using. It will help a lot because after when you import it to some CAD program, uh, it will be a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so when it's prepared, then I can save it, save as, give it a name, layer one, layer one, for example, and save it as SVG file. You have to do it with the other two layers. Okay, again, it is too small. I can scale it, hold it in the control button, or I can change it better here, 100 by 100. And that, then it will be uh, the same size. So don't forget, this is bitmap image. Uh, click on its path, trace bitmap. Okay, I can close this window now. So I can delete the pixel image and the vectorized trace image. I can simplify that, uh, simplify, and then I can save it. File, save, um, save as. And also I'm saving it as SVG file. And we can do it with the third layer and the next software. This is now the Tinkercad. Very interesting that uh, my primary programs, Fusion 360 or Design Spark Mechanica, crashed when I imported the SVG file to extrude it to third uh, dimension. And the only software from my collection is the Tinkercad, uh, which is working in the browser online. Uh, probably the reason is that somehow it reduces the number of triangles. So it always I just adjust the design to possibilities of the software. And here I am importing the SVG file. It's asking the scale, it's 100 millimeter default, which I uh, added. And here it is. So the SVG file imported in Fusion 360 and it's already extruded. So I have this third dimension. The size of Z, I would like to reduce. Um, currently now it's one millimeter, but I need uh, 0 0.2 millimeter because that's the, my layer height in the printing. So here I have to ch change the snap grid. Well, the 25, okay, 0 0.1 will be the size. And then I can scale this to 0 0.2 millimeter layer height. 
I'm not sure the full process. So after I did this, then I imported the next layer. That's also 0.2 millimeter layer height. It will be on the top of this one and the third one also on top of this one. And all three layers I will place on box, which is uh, size of the 100 by 100 millimeter, maybe three millimeter will be the thickness. I will round the corner and this is what I will get. So here you can see all three layers. Uh, basically the third layer I replaced, I just draw a circle here on the eyes. And I placed everything on this rectangle box and I rounded the corners and I combine everything. So this is the puzzle, but it's still in one piece. So if, if I zoom here, you can see those layers. Each layer is 0 0.2 millimeter in uh, layer height. So one more thing I have to prepare, and those are the, those puzzle lines. I use the spline command to draw these lines, and then I offset it with a 0 0.2 millimeter. That will be the gap between two pieces. And uh, after this, I extrude it. I decided to create it myself because I needed a very simple 3x3 three three puzzle. Maybe it's a better solution if you find on the internet and download these lines. You don't have to draw it yourself. And now I can import that those lines which I prepared in Fusion 360. Okay. So thickness uh, of these lines is 0 0.2 millimeters. Let's move it because I it has to cut and let's make it a hole and then when I combine that with the, my puzzle it will cut from the puzzle the material. And after printing this basically I will have those nine pieces which will be my pieces for the puzzle. Let's zoom in. Okay, everything looks good. And now let's see what how it looks like in a slicer. And after importing the STL into Prusa slicer, here you can see the preview of the printing. Important numbers we have to remember is 3.2 millimeter layer height because here I have to add the first color change. The second color change will be 3.4 millimeters, and 3.6 millimeters I will be the these small circles in the middle of the eyes. Printing time approximately two hours, and I will use seven meters of filament. And final step, I'm, uh, when I generate the G code, I'm going to the prusaprinters.org website. Link will be in the description of the video. I'm importing t here the G code, which I again generated in from Prusa Slicer, because here I have to add that M600 command for color change. So the first color change was on 3.2 millimeters, then 3.4 millimeters, and 3.6 millimeters is the third color change, which I uh, saw in the slice of these layer heights. Okay, let's download the code and uh, we can start with the 3D printing.
So that will be it. I'm very happy with the result. Unfortunately, my youngest daughter uh, still don't know how to put this together. Uh, but uh, she will learn soon, I hope. And uh, if you like this video and you learned something, feel free to signal me by clicking that like button. And if you have any idea how to improve this work, you can share it with others too. Uh, feel free to write in the comment your suggestions. Okay, that will be it. Thank you for watching and happy printing. Bye.